Hey guys, I'm Aburu and welcome back to World of Warships. Today we'll be looking at the Tier 7 Japanese cruiser, the Miyoko. Now the Miyoko used to be a Tier 8 uh, cruiser down the Japanese tier line, uh, but it was reduced in the 0.3.1 patch. Um, the Megami was pushed up to Tier 8 and this was reduced to Tier 7. That's primarily because the Megami is a better ship in almost every respect. So there are some interesting aspects about the Miyoko. Um, it does have many 203mm uh, guns, we have three on the front and two at the back, so that's ten guns in total on five turrets. In terms of appearance, it looks pretty much the same to the Oba, with the exception that the Miyoko is slightly longer, um, but other than that really the uh, hull is pretty much the same. So before I have a look at the main stats of the Miyoko, I'll quickly mention that the Miyoko, well the Miyoko only has one ship really to compare with, and that's the Pensacola, the American Tier 7 cruiser. And let's have a look at the Pensacola. Now the Pensacola is renowned for having not an awful lot of armour, it does have some powerful guns, it can get to a good speed, um, and it does turn quite quickly as well. But in comparison to the Pensacola, the Miyoko is a much better ship. The Miyoko is very formidable. Initially the Miyoko was a tier 8, so I don't really know how many of those tier 8 uh, stats it has remaining, but it is a far better ship at tier 7. Okay, so let's have a look at the main stats of the Miyoko. So the first stat is survivability, and that's 51 out of 100. That gives it up to 39,200 maximum health. Um, in comparison to the Pensacola, the Pensacola has 46 out of 100 and has a maximum health of 34,300. In terms of armour, the Miyoko has up to 102mm, 6 to 102. Unfortunately, there are no um, specifics. They have removed that function at the moment, but I'm sure they'll bring that back in the future. In comparison to the Pensacola, the Pensacola has 6 to 76 millimeters of armor, so the Miyoko is much better in terms of survivability and armor and health. It has a massive advantage. Okay, so the next stat of the Miyoko is the artillery firepower, and that's 56 out of 100. As you can see here, we have two guns at the very front, one gun which is back-mounted at the front as well. So there's three uh, turrets at the front with six guns, and two turrets at the back as well. So we have a maximum of 10 guns on this ship, and they're all 203mm guns, so they have a very nice amount of penetration and damage. There's a small amount of secondary armament on this ship. We have 4x2 127mm guns, um, which act as both anti-ship guns and anti-air guns. And the key aspect really about the Miyoko's guns in comparison to the Pensacola is that they can go a further range. The maximum distance of the Miyoko is 161 kilometers versus the Pensacola's 15.7. So you have a 400 meter advantage there where you can fire at the Pensacola and he can't fire at you. The Pensacola has the same amount of guns. It has 2x3 and 2x2. So it has 10 203 millimeter guns, uh, but they're on four turrets. So the Pensacola is 51 out of 100 in terms of artillery versus the Miyoko's 56. So the rate of fire on the main guns on the Miyoko is 5 rounds per minute. They do turn quite slowly though at 45 seconds for 180 degrees. That's quite bad for a cruiser. The accuracy for these guns is 144 meters dispersion, which is quite good for a 203mm uh, calibre guns. The maximum damage with high explosive with these guns is 3,800, and the maximum AP damage is 4,700. So the main guns of the Miyoko are better than the Pensacola's. The next stat is torpedo firepower, and with all Japanese cruisers in the game, they'll have torpedoes in some way or another. Uh, this ship does, however, have some good torpedoes. So the torpedoes on this ship can go to a maximum distance of 10 kilometers, which is quite good for a Japanese ship of this tier. Uh, the reload time is 82 seconds, so they, they do reload fairly quickly. The turn time is fast for the torpedoes, which is 7.2 seconds. The torpedoes go to a good speed at 62 knots, which is quite fast for torpedoes at this tier and the damage potential for these torpedoes is very high at 17,000. So in this ship we have 610mm torpedoes, uh, 4 by 3 2 on each side, and they're just below the deck. Now these torpedoes are back mounted, so you can't use them in an aggressive manner when you're going towards an enemy. They're very much a defensive measure, defending you against battleships that are within close distance, or enemy cruisers when they're within close distance as well. I wouldn't really recommend using them against destroyers. Destroyers maneuver very quickly, uh, and they can very easily dodge them. Now having torpedoes in a Japanese ship from tier 6 onwards is a big advantage versus the American cruisers. The American cruisers don't have torpedoes except for the Atlanta, uh, but the Atlanta is a premium ship and the torpedoes only go to a maximum distance of around 5 kilometers. So having torpedoes on this ship is a big advantage against the Americans. The next stat is anti-air capability and this ship is 35 out of 100. 
Uh, we do have those dual purpose guns which act as both anti-ship guns and anti-plane guns. We also have a nice array of small caliber guns across the ship. Versus the American equivalent, the Pensacola has a better anti-air capability of 46. Um, but of course the Americans are usually better in terms of anti-air capability. This ship has torpedoes and the Americans do not. So having that 11 advantage for the Americans really isn't an awful lot. You can shoot down planes in this ship. You do have the ability which increases anti-air capability, which can shoot down some planes. You can act as a fleet defender if you want to. But in my opinion, all Japanese cruisers from tier 6 and above should play an offensive role as opposed to a defensive role. So the anti-air capability of this ship isn't quite as good as the Americans, uh, but it's still good. The next stat of the ship is maneuverability, and that's 74 out of 100. This thing can maneuver very well, um, goes to a very good top speed of 36 knots. It turns very quickly in terms of rudder shift time, but the turning circle radius, however, is very poor at only 780 meters. In comparison to the Pensacola, the Pensacola has um, 33 knots maximum speed, 620 meters circle radius, and 9.1 seconds rudder shift time. The Pensacola is rated at 68 out of 100 versus the maneuverability of this ship, which is 74. I would say that the Miyoko's 74 maneuverability mainly reflects its top speed of 36 knots. It does have a speed advantage of 3 knots over the Pensacola, so you can push the enemy Pensacolas to your maximum distance of 16.1, and there's no real threat of them catching up to you because of your speed advantage. So the aspect of the maneuverability which really lets down this ship is the turning circle radius, which is very poor. And the last stat of the ship is concealment. We have 51 out of 100, 13.1 kilometers surface detectability, and 8.2 kilometers air detectability range. Versus the Pensacola, the Pensacola has 40 uh, overall concealment score, 15.7 surface detectability, and 7.8 air detectability. So in terms of ship-to-ship -ship spotting, the Miyoko has a severe advantage. So a general sort of comparison between the Miyoko and the Pensacola. The Miyoko is a much better ship in almost every respect, except for anti-air capability, where it has a slight nerf. Um, but other than that, it has better armor, it has better top health, it has a further range on guns, it has torpedoes, it has a better maneuverability, and it has a better concealment. So the Miyoko is a very formidable ship, and the Miyoko is definitely something to be wary of. Okay, so let's have a look at the main modules and credible upgrades of the Miyoko. So as you can see, there are no main battery upgrades, no gunfire control system upgrades, and no engine upgrades. So we only have a choice of one torpedo upgrade and two hull upgrades, which lead down to the Megami at tier 8. So the first upgrade I would choose is this one here, which is the first hull upgrade. You have plus 1,800 health to your maximum health of 39,200. You have plus two torpedo tubes, so an extra one on each side. That's an extra three torpedoes per side. So survivability is plus two, torpedoes plus 20, anti-air capability is plus eight, and maneuverability is plus two. So it does say we have a maneuverability increase. Down here it says we have a minus rudder shift time of 2.8 seconds. Now the second upgrade I would choose is the second hull upgrade, which further increases anti-air capability by 32. When this thing is basic, without any upgrades, it's a very terrible ship for shooting down planes, but with these two hull upgrades, it does become quite good. After the second hull upgrade, you can go straight to the Megami at tier 8, but I chose the torpedo one anyway. There is a big grind of around 60,000 to get to the Megami at tier 8, so I chose the torpedoes anyway. The torpedo upgrade is plus nearly 1,000 in extra damage, plus 3 knots in speed, but minus 0.1 rounds per minute. So you will be in the ship for a while, and that extra damage on torpedoes and extra speed does help. So I have chosen some credible upgrades for the ship. So the first upgrade I chose for the ship is the main battery modification 1. There are quite a lot of guns on this ship. You have three at the front and two at the back, and they can very easily be knocked out. So this mod is minus 20% chance of magazine detonation, minus 20% chance to critical damage to main batteries, and minus 20% to main battery repair time. The second one I've chosen is the gunfire control system modification 1, which increases main battery accuracy. From 0.3.1 with the battleships, this upgrade is for increased range, but only for battleships. For cruisers and destroyers, this upgrade is accuracy only. Despite the accuracy being quite good on these guns, it's always good to make them better. The third upgrade I've chosen is the damage control system modification 1, which is minus 3% chance of flooding and minus 5% chance of fire. I've chosen this primarily because of the minus chance of fire. Um, nowadays, with the 0.3.1 update, everyone is firing high explosives, so you will be set on fire almost instantly. Um, so I've chosen that just to reduce the chance of fire. And the fourth upgrade I've chosen is minus 20% to rudder shift time. I did mention that the turning circle radius of the ship is terrible at nearly 800 meters. So if you reduce your rudder shift time by 20%, uh, you'll be able to turn quicker. 
Yoko is far better than the Pensacola in almost every respect. Yes, the Pensacola is a smaller target, it's more nimble, it can turn faster, this thing can go to a better top speed, it has further range on guns, it has higher survivability, it has higher concealment, it's just a better ship in almost every respect. So let's have a look at some gameplay in the Miyoko. Okay, so this is the Tier 7 Japanese cruiser, the Miyoko on North Standard Battle. So, typical of all standard battles, it's uh, our team versus their team, and we have to either cap their base or destroy all their ships. So we have four battleships on my team, um, including one aircraft carrier, uh, five cruisers, and a couple of destroyers. The enemy team has a couple more uh, destroyers than we have. Um, I'm going to head towards the one and two line, the one between one and three, usually, uh, where the enemy and the allied battleships usually fight. I'm in a cruiser, so my primary role is really to either defend the fleet uh, from enemy planes or just to sort of use my nice 16.1 kilometer max distance to hopefully put some holes into enemy battleships. So I'm heading this way with my platoon mate. He's going to play sort of bait and run tactics with the, uh, with the enemy battleships. Bait and run tactics usually consists of uh, destroyers, very fast maneuvering destroyers, um, evading battleship shots, luring them in to fire at the destroyer as opposed to uh, allied battleships. So your allied battleships survive longer. This tactic is best to sort of support your team um, and to lure the fire away from your allied battleships. So I'm spotting a couple of enemies at this point. There's a Nagato over there, and now a destroyer has appeared. So the Nicholas has appeared. He's 11 kilometers away. We, I have switched to high explosive at this point to do a couple of spread shots to hopefully get a couple of hits on this uh, destroyer. The best thing to do is to, uh, well, in my opinion, to when you see a destroyer from this distance, you usually wouldn't engage. But at this point, he's so far forward, we might as well try. Um, high explosive rounds all the way, and just do a couple of spread shots, get an idea of what range he's at, and then just go up and down, up and down, left and right. Get an idea of where the shot's going to hit, and you might get lucky. Uh, previous times when I've done this tactic, I have done some serious damage, knocked out engines, knocked out uh, rudders of destroyers, just by doing this sort of uh, switch of direction with my guns. So another battleship has appeared in the, in the distance there. The enemy cruisers are in the center of the map, and it seems half my team are going around the other side of the map, uh, probably to get like a, some kind of flanking maneuver. So we have two enemy Nagatos clusters up there. There's one 15.3 kilometers away. Of course, these guns go to 16.1, so I can do a salvo of high explosive um, just to see how what kind of damage that does. And there is the destroyer. The destroyer is only 7.2 kilometers away. We have three second reload, but he is being finished off by our allied ship. Our shots did, in fact, hit the Nagato, so we did do some good damage, around 5k. Firing a second broadside here. He is not going overly fast, but the Nagato can go to a good top speed of around 28 knots, which is quite fast for a battleship. We've got a couple of hits there for 2,500. Of course, high explosive uh, isn't really well known for its high damage on armored targets, but there was a well-known bug in this version of the game where some high explosive shells ignored armor. So the enemy Nagato I was attacking a second ago is now 15.7 kilometers away. Uh, of course, my guns only go to 16.1 max distance, but we're gonna try it anyway. Um, it does seem though that the Nagato does turn quite quickly despite the, um, well, the Japanese uh, ships in general weren't really uh, buffed as much as the other ships in terms of uh, turning circle radius in the 0.3.1 update but the Nagato does seem to be dodging these shots quite well so the other Nagato on my right is putting holes and holes into my allied New York the Fuso, the Atlanta and the New York are trying to take out the Nagato but the enemy Nagato is quite far ahead but it does seem like the enemy Nagato did overextend a bit he is quite far over in comparison to his allied ships so we'll see what happens there. The Nagato I was attacking a second ago is now only 14 kilometers away. He is side onto us now. He's trying to avoid some torpedoes. We're going to fire a couple of rounds of AP. It does seem like either his engine's broken or he's stopped to avoid the torpedoes. So we did lead the shots a bit wrong there um, and they did miss. Now I didn't realize at this point in the replay that uh, he was at a complete stop. Um, I was firing to hopefully see if I can get him, but unfortunately I didn't. Now if I look on my map, there is in fact a cruiser rushing down the middle of the, of the map uh, along with an enemy destroyer. So at this point I, I haven't noticed them yet. I'm firing at this New York thinking, oh everything's okay, I'll just keep putting holes and holes into these enemy battleships without looking in my map. And this is where I see the, the Cleveland. The Cleveland's on my left and he's a massive, massive threat. The Cleveland has one of the highest base DPMs per tier in the game. So I'm firing one last salvo at the New York, got the guns round, and as soon as that's landed, I'm gonna turn these guns round and take out the Cleveland. There is a destroyer as well there, but he's a bit further ahead. I'm trying to get these guns around now. The guns do turn very, very slowly, but there we are. I'm gonna fire AP initially, full broadside. He's actually turning in a way so that all my shots hit except for one. We knocked out one of his guns at that point, seven hits, 
and a good amount of damage. He's six kilometers away, so he's within prime distance, really, for me to get some holes into him. Flying another broadside here of AP. Uh, most of them miss, but we did get another critical damage and another gun knockout. So even though we haven't done massive amounts of damage, we have knocked out a few of his guns. So that's very good. Uh, Cleveland's are very reliant on how many guns they have. So I see at this point that some allied torpedoes are heading this way. I'm thinking that's very peculiar. It seems like one of the allied ships has fired a spread to hopefully take out this Cleveland. Has missed, gone back, and if I didn't move at that point, if I were kept down the site, I would have been hit by a torpedo and I would have taken a massive amount of damage. So I'm firing again at this Cleveland, taking out another gun there, and eight hits there. You can fire over and over again in this ship. The two or three millimeter guns do a substantial amount of damage. Large shots going in, 1,000 health left, and we finished them off with a Citadel hit. So the Citadel hit didn't do a huge amount of damage, only 800 damage. Uh, but we finished them off, so very good. So at this point, uh, it seems like the enemy battleships on the right I was attacking earlier are very clustered together at this point. Um, no ships spotted on my left. My platoon mate, Happy07, is sitting over there trying to bait and use his massive range on Sims guns to deal with the enemy. So I'm pushing down the center of the map the way the Cleveland came to hopefully try and catch the enemy battleships off guard. There are three there. I know very well that at least one of the ships is quite low, uh, the, the enemy Nagato. He may have healed, but he still might be low. Okay, so the Nagato is now at 12,000 health. Uh, the second one is 50,000, and the New York is 45,000. Now, the New York is very slow, along with most American battleships, the low-tiered ones, um, so he's not really a threat, and he's well out the way. So the Nagatos are a lot faster, so they're coming in very quickly. It seems like the very low Nagato is taking some massive damage from Allied planes. 4,000 health left. And the other Nagato is a big threat, though. He's nearly full health at 51,000. If I get too close to the Nagatos, if I get within 10 kilometers, then it will be a bit of an issue. The first Nagato is facing this way now. He's only got 4,000 health left. My guns are trying to get round, and I'm, I'm turning in such a way to try and help my guns to get around quicker. Uh, you will need to do that a lot in this ship to actually get your guns to effectively hit the enemy, I've noticed. It does turn quite quickly now, this ship. It's not that bad at turning, but the guns turn very poorly. So we hit there, it was a non-damaging penetration. Second shot's going in, again another non-damage penetration. 1,500 damage, 400 left. Trying to get these shots in from all angles. Uh, all of them are firing in this direction, and we finished them off. We managed to turn the ship in a way to get behind this small rock for cover against this other Nagato. I can turn quite well in this ship, but a Nagato is now on my rear, and he's seen what I did to his ally, and he's coming for me. Now, what I did there with the enemy Nagato is quite risky. The first one, taking him out, um, but in my opinion, he could have been seconds away from his heal ability, and that could have changed the case of the match. Now, we only have one battleship on our team, and of course, battleships are, in my opinion, one of the best types of ships in the game. So this guy's putting some holes into me. I do have the speed advantage here, but I need some time to get to my maximum speed. I'm doing a couple of spreads of torpedoes to hopefully get this guy to go straight onto me. So, in fact, he only has his front two guns available to fire at me as opposed to his full broadside. I'm trying to turn around this rock in front of me. Now he's... Now he's at a disadvantage, he only has his two front guns and his two back guns are swinging around, so he has two available guns. So I'm trying to do evasive maneuvers here, left to right, left to right, firing another spread of torpedoes. Remember, these torpedoes can do a massive amount of damage if they hit. So firing a broadside here, 7.7 kilometers away, I can't really miss from this distance, 2,000 damage. My torpedoes can do a massive amount of damage if they hit, and of course they most likely will induce flooding. So he's coming around the other side of the rock, um, I'm going to turn into the rock, uh, to try and get some more cover and by that time hopefully my torpedoes will be, will be available again for me to hopefully finish them off so the independence is there very low i'm thinking oh it's a very easy target trying to get my guns around only have three at this point i'm going to fire armor piercing at this guy to hopefully finish him off i don't really have time to switch to high explosive because i know the enemy uh battleship is on my right the problem with these guns really is that they are very reliant on the maneuverability of the ship to actually get the guns around quick enough to finish off enemies within close distance. Now, this guy has only 3,500 health left. He is almost side on to me, so I'm getting some perfect shots here. 400 damage, 1,700 damage, two shots going in, and we finished him off. We got six hits there, and the most important thing is that we actually did finish him off. So I finished off that independence, but now we're in a bit of a trouble. We came to a stop to avoid the rock so we can get some effective hits on the independence. And now here is the Nagato, only six kilometers away, so he's within perfect distance. He has all his guns on me at this point, firing a full broadside. He only hit me for 2,500, so we got away very lucky there. So I have all my guns available, but they do turn very, very slowly. So firing again and again, trying to get all my guns on him as quickly as possible to get some holes in him. 3,500 damage there, 4,000 damage there. He fired again with secondary armament, but he did miss because I'm taking cover behind this rock. Now if those 
secondary armament did hit, I would be in serious trouble. So I see the general direction of the Nagato. I see that he's being hit by some torpedoes, so he's turning to avoid them, and that means he's coming behind me. I did initially think he's coming on my left, and that would have been okay. I would have my torpedoes on him by that time and finished him off. But now I'm heading towards a rock, and now I'm beached. So that is a bit of an issue. He's coming very quickly behind me around this rock. I need to turn this ship around as quickly as I can to get my torpedoes on him as quickly as possible, otherwise I am dead. So I have the advantage here in terms of back-mounted torpedoes uh, with Japanese cruisers, but it's not enough. I need to get back and turn a very sharp angle and then go forward at the other angle to hopefully get around this rock before he does. So I'm getting some allied support at this point. There is an ally on my left firing high explosive at this guy, so it is setting one fire, but he is only two kilometers away. As soon as he gets past this rock, I'm dead. So I'm turning very, very sharply. I'm avoid getting beached at this point, firing two spreads of torpedoes to hopefully finish him off before he gets around this corner. So the enemy battleship is very low at this point, firing two spreads of torpedoes, going to have to fire all my guns when he's around this corner to hopefully finish him off. But just before he managed to get around that corner, my ally finished him off. So he did save me there. I have got three kills so far in this match. I did barely miss that guy with torpedoes. I could have fired a bit earlier, uh, thinking back to it now. Uh, but I had a very lucky run there, uh, avoiding the ship with those rocks. And the allied support with the planes is fantastic. So good job to the allied aircraft carrier. So there's another ship here, there's a New York, I'm going to fire a broadside but I am very low at this point to the extent where uh, his last shot of the salvo finished me off. It's a shame I was killed by the New York, um, he was the last enemy on their team so I could have done better in that situation, I could have gone straight uh, the opposite direction of the New York, uh, straightened up and I would have been a smaller target and I probably would have likely avoided the enemy New York's fire. So we only have one ship left, that's the New York, he's being pummeled at this point and there we are. So we did quite well in this map. We got 218,000 credits, 2,300 experience, 114 free experience, 95 hits, one torpedo hit, one plane shot down, three critically damaged, and three destroyed, and one citadel hit. In terms of experience, we came fourth on the team. We got three kills, so we got the most. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get in the top three, but we did well nonetheless. In terms of damage, we got around 50,000 damage with just shells, and of course, we got that one hit on the enemy Nagato for 12,000 with torpedoes. Yeah, so we did quite well. Yes, this has been the Miyoko, the Tier 7 Japanese cruiser. It was reduced from Tier 8 to Tier 7. I'm not sure if some of the Tier 8 stats remain, but it is a formidable ship, much better than the American equivalent, the Pensacola, in almost every respect. Despite the switch from the Miyoko and the Megami, I believe that the Miyoko in this current state at Tier 7 is nearly as good as the Megami was at Tier 7 as well. So the Miyoko has quite a lot of health, a fair amount of armour, very good artillery firepower, amazing torpedoes, the anti-air capability of this ship is good, the manoeuvrability is good as well with that very good top speed of 36 knots and concealment is good as well. It's a fantastic ship and looking forward to playing the Megami again at Tier 8. So next time I'll be looking at the Tier 8 American battleship, the North Carolina. It is truly an amazing ship. So this has been the Miyoko guys, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.